so uh, first of all, I just found out that um, a few of my slides might have small uh, sized letters in text. Um, so maybe if anyone wants to move a little bit further, just a suggestion, not mandatory. All right, um, I will also speak louder. <laughs> right, uh, where's my mouse? Okay, so up and running with with Reason ML. Uh, show of hands, who've heard of Reason ML? <laughs> right, two people. Okay. <laughs> So um, Reason ML is um, all right. So I'm Zenger from YLD. You can find me in uh, GitHub and Twitter. So Reason ML is not a new language. Uh, it's not a framework. It's 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 meant to be used as a language. So it's a new syntax uh, for OCaml, and it compiles to readable JavaScript. So I'm guessing you're like OCaml, Camel, Camel. <laughs> so. Um, show of hands, who heard of OCaml? Maybe? Okay, more people. Nice. Uh, so, this project starts, starts in Facebook. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Walk, who's the creator of React, he wanted to create a, a statically typed uh, language that would compile into uh, JavaScript. He started doing some, some tests with SML, and then later on he decided to go with OCaml because it was closer to JavaScript. Um, but then they decided it was too soon to release that project, so they decided to go with React.js, which I think my, more of you have heard than Reason. Um, so what, what is OCaml? It's, it's um, an industrial strength language, uh, programming language supporting functional, imperative, and object-oriented cells. I'm just reading from the next slide. But wh what, I, what I want to say is that hack um, Heck is the PHP compiler for JavaScript. PHP compiler used at Facebook, and Flow uh, is the type system for JavaScript. They're both um, their compilers are both written in OCaml, and Messenger.com is written in uh, Reason. Fifty percent of Messenger.com. Uh, is reason 100% of front-end code reason. So, OCaml, um, like I said, um, you c OCaml has a lot of advantages. First, is very close to, to JavaScript, functional, imperative, and object-oriented styles, which is interesting, but it has a very powerful static type system. Uh, users can define their own types, uh, memory management is automatic, no need to allocate and then uh, control, and it's got a very sophisticated module system. It has the advantage that it can compile to native. You can have standalone applications, you can have bytecode or native. Why uh, or how can we use OCaml to write JavaScript? So OCaml, uh, the compiler, is very interesting because it allows you to modularly use different layers. So you have the syntactic, syntax layer, the semantics, and the compilation layer. And uh, what happened is at some point, uh, the guys at Bloomberg, they, they said, well, this is amazing. We can use the, the, last, um, the last layer to compile to JavaScript. So they, use, they created BuckleScript which is uh, a layer for the compiler, uh, for the OCaml compiler, that will take OCaml, process the syntax, the semantics, and then uh, compile to JavaScript. So then Jordan, what he created was the other, the other layer, which is the syntax layer. So it, it processes the, the reason syntax, uses OCaml semantics to verify the typings and all that. And then it uses the buckle script compiler to compile down to, to JavaScript. And um, the good thing is that you you get highly performant JavaScript, even though it's um, very optimized. Um, yeah, sorry, readable. I mean, it's very readable, even though it's highly optimized and performant. So this means that. After you compile, you can go through the code and is almost as 
if it was written by a person. So, okay, so why would I adopt this rather than TypeScript or Flow? So, here you get 100% type coverage. This is not the best effort type system, uh, like TypeScript or Flow. Whenever the, the program compiles, you're 100% sure that it, it will work and you won't have type errors. It's much more performant than TypeScript. So for instance, uh, messenger.com, it compiles in 200 milliseconds. If you've used uh, TypeScript before, you can only dream of that. Um, because it's, the syntax is so close to, to JavaScript, you got incremental learning and incremental code base conversion. Um, it's very easy to interrupt and interface with JavaScript. Great ecosystem and tooling. There's a lot there I'll talk about soon enough. So you can still use functional and imperative code style. No need to make a full transition to functional like Elm or um, Haskell or Clojure, uh, Clojure script. It's got great compiler error messages. For those of you who know Elm, the, the, the error messages are close to Elm error messages. Got automatic code formatting, you can compile to native or JavaScript. So even though we're using buckle script, we can decide to um, compile to JavaScript that code elimination and optimizations with a very human readable compiled code. Convinced? I hope so. All right, so some syntax for you. Let bindings, bindings are immutable. They cannot be reassigned, but they can be rebound, which means that, all right, I'll get there. So in JavaScript, we have const and let. All bindings in uh, JavaScript in Reason are let. We don't have vars in, in Reason because vars are mutable, are reassignable, all that. So everything is immutable. And like I was saying, they cannot be reassigned, they need to be rebound. There's a escape hatch. So in JavaScript you can do this, let x equal five, x plus one equals x. You can do that. But here you'd, you'd have to use a reference and that reference means that the, the value is mutable and you use special operators to mutate it. But it's not um, advised. It's advised to do against it. So what you do is let x equals 5, and then again let x equals x plus 1. So you're not reassigning, you're rebinding the x um, value. So strings and, char and characters are very similar to, to JavaScript. Um, all strings must use double quotes. There's no single quote strings. Single quotes are for single characters only. They get compiled for uh, performance. So hence the, um, the, the distinction. Um, screen, string contact concatenation, you'll use a, a double end rather than a single end in JavaScript. Special characters still need to be escaped in, um, in strings. Uh, Multiline uses um, curly braces plus pipes. And then you can have Unicode characters and variable interpolation. Okay, so yeah, there's this problem because of the size of the, um, of the screen, which is not mapping the, um, the underlining. Please let me know uh, if at any time it's hard to read and I'll try to, to make it easier. So Unicode and then string interpolation. Just wanna make a note that here, the string interpolation, it's just a J there. The other, it's a JS, but it's easier afterwards to, to, after starting using it, it becomes natural. So Boolean. Um, even though Reason has a Boolean like JavaScript, when we use uh, true and false in Reason, we're uh, talking about OCaml's true and false. If we, in JavaScript, there's JavaScript naturally, but in, in OCaml, in Reason, because we are compiling true OCaml and then to JavaScript, Reason uses true and false from OCaml. And if we want to use from JavaScript, we need to, to do js.true or js.false. Then um, operators, uh, negation and comparison operators are the same. 
uh, Reason has a deep recursive compare. So if we want to compare uh, records, which are objects in Reason, um, we can do deep comparison, um, but it might have overhead in performance. Watch out for that. Uh, in JavaScript, oh, and there's no in equality with implicit casting, which is um, if we cannot do one equals string of one. Like I was saying, true and false are different. We are not the same as just true and false. We have these convenience functions to convert between the two. So in JavaScript, numbers and floats are almost the same in Reason and JavaScript. Uh, the great difference is that Reason, rather than JavaScript, distinguish between the both. So when we are using integers, they can only work with integers unless converted and um, floats can only interact with floats so if we want to 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 add to uh, f to floats we need a special operator plus dot modulus is mod rather than the just the percentage sign so records records are like javascript objects there are reason objects, but they are very different. So records must be typed. So whenever we define an object, we must define a type. We don't have that in JavaScript. Uh, we have that in reason when we have an object of type point, then we must declare first that its type is, for instance, x int integer, and then y integer as well. Notice the, the mutable here, this means that these so records are also immutable. It's one ca main characteristic of functional languages and functional paradigms. So, if you want to change later the the y property of an object, we need to declare it as mutable. So all access uh, operations are like in JavaScript, just the same, and records can be spread inside inside records for modification. So just to clarify this situation, I will show an example now. So we have a type of person which has a name and an age. For instance, me, which is a record, age 32, name José Nogueira. And then we would maybe think, oh, let me just change me.age equals me.age plus one. We cannot do this. We because records are immutable, we can have, we can never use the same or change the, that um, record, even though it says mutable. We want to create a new one and mutate it. So here, for instance, uh, we see that me next year we're spreading me, then changing the variable on me dot age. That's the, where the mutate um, property comes in. And then, for instance, if I wanted to add is retired. I'll probably not be retired next year, so let's say it's false. It won't allow. It will error because it does not have that type. So if again, if I wanted to do it properly, I would say me next year, spread me, and then age me dot age plus one. Destructuring and shorthanding is supported as well, so taking the, the, the just created me next year um, a record, we can get name and age out of that. And then if we want to rebind it, for instance, and we want to create a record f for that, we, we, do, we can do just name and age, like in JavaScript, rather than name, name, age, age. Yeah. Sorry. OK, so functions. So this is very similar to, to JavaScript. We have anonymous functions, the same. We do not have functions declarations. We only have function expressions. Function calling uh, is the same. And functions to be recursive need to be defined with the rec keyword. So I don't have an example here, but I'll, next slide, I promise. Functions have this. Um, difference where in a normal JavaScript function, if we want to return a value, we need to, to define, to, to explicitly return in, um, in reason, the last line of, of the block gets returned always. 
So another great thing about uh, Reason is that we get um, currying for free, which means we can do a partial application of this variable, uh, of this function, and um, this you could, could only do in JavaScript with a closure, but you get this for free in, in Reason. So Reason lists, Reason lists have this property of being homogeneous, so you can only have one type of objects inside or one type of each element of the list or array. So it's either integers, arrays, lists, strings, but you, you, can add, you cannot have not homogeneous uh, lists and arrays. Arrays have this special um, way of being defined with the pipe and pi the pipe and, and, the, and the brace. Arrays are mutable, uh, lists are not, so you, you can redefine uh, a certain index of the array. If we want an homogeneous group of elements, we would go with a tuple, which I'll talk in the next slide. Uh, and in JavaScript, we could do this in a hackish way with, with a, an array with elements, but it's not the same. Lists are defined like arrays in JavaScript, and there are no immutable lists in JavaScript. And lists are very fast for uh, prepending, iterating, and some stuff like that. So here I'm spreading the list and iterating, um, sorry, just spreading the list and prepending um, an, an element there. Tuples, which I was talking about, they are immutable, they are ordered, and they are fixed size at creation time. So we cannot add elements to, to a tuple but they are um, homogeneous, which means we can use different types together when we need it. We can have all the same types, for instance, here we are defining a type of uh, coordinates 3D, which is a tuple, but it's also a type, so they can be t types. Here we are uh, passing uh, the coordinates as a um, coordinate 3D, and then we pass three floats, and it matches. Switch. Here is one of the great things of uh, Reason, which are called variants. And um, this we can switch on tuples as well. So, for instance, if we have a, a, um, a tuple with these variables, is window open, is door open, uh, and then we pass it here, we've got all the possible cases, and then the, it matches against one of them and it returns a result. So this is much faster than having, have, having to, to add a lot of if-then-else logic. Yeah. Variants. So the variants need to be typed and um, the types of the variants need to be capitalized because they are, for, for reason, they are constructors. So, so there you have front-end, full-stack full and back-end. They're all capitalized. We are defining a, a variable dev input of type developer variant, which is full stack. And then we switch on that and notice that it, it matches against the case and returns a string. So that dev string um, is full stack developer. I'm sorry for the, the underlines out of place. Here, uh, the function with the rec and again, we, we, are, we are sorting against uh, a case, the, f the function is recursive. When we get no longer any result, it just returns an empty list. Otherwise, it's, it just um, uh, destructures the list and does, does operations of that. Modules. Reason has an incredible module system, which allows to a lot of flexibility. Modules can have types, they may or not be in the same file. Modules, uh, the types can be inferred, like in everything across Reason, they, they can be inferred. We don't need to, to define all the types because the compiler will infer most of it. Um, and it will only complain if they, there's, there's a doubt. So here we're, we're defining types and uh, type signatures. On the module, we define the types with the variants, and here we are using it. Here's another switch. And the thing is, we don't need to import uh, 
modules from other files. So for instance, in app file, we can see that we're calling school.profession and um, it already knows that school there comes from the module school and profession is the the profession type so here we we have another person that has a profession out of school and it's got the variant school dot teacher which which is there um, and here we are, we're calling the school dot get profession um, function and then it gives, gives you the result and there's another way to open so we can have a global open where we do open school here and slides are very different from my computer I'm sorry uh, <laughs> and here you 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 can call just for profession teacher and um, get profession and it will know that it's being called out of that module so some code examples There's some lag here. Okay, so given that it was made at at Facebook, one of the first things they did was uh, Reason React. So Reason React are React bindings for Reason. It's very interesting and it's taken quite uh, a big um, evolution since the beginning. Uh, now they've included uh, Redux. Um, made in in Reason inside Reason React, so there's no need to include uh, Redux. Um, I'll show you in the, in the next example how we can work with Reducer. Um, so this is a simple stateless component. Um, we every model for for React needs to have a make function. Make function is what will be called when JSX comes in play. We we define the, the the properties here. Notice the the tilde before message. I'm not sure it's you can see, but this means that it's a labeled um, it's a labeled uh, argument. So what it means is if we pass the attribute message here, it will map to that message on the function. Um, we spread the component. This is the same as um, extending the the React class. We have a render method to which gets past the, the self, which is the this in in reason, and then we call self dot handle, and handle click gets the event and the self, and then okay. So in re, in reason React, if we're not passing HTML, we need to pass elements. So we cannot pass, for instance, a single string into HTML that won't work we'll need to call react dot string to uh, reason react dot string to element and then pass the either a variable or or a string or a number whatever we have react react dom as well in uh, reason react it's, it's all there so reducer component um, again uh, here we call reason react dot reducer component we have action types state types and here we have a ref because we have this timer that's going to be counting and we want that value to be more mutable so there's a ref there that allows us to mutate that value um, we have this function that is called reducer these names, these are this is a convention we need to to follow. So when when we're using um, a reducer component, we need to have a, redu a reducer. We we have um, lifecycle as well. Uh, okay, I'll get to there. Um, so the reducer function gets an action in the state. It can switch on the action, and then um, we have the initial state. Initial state um, is 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 a function that needs to return something this, that is of the type of the state of the state we've defined needs to match, and then we we work with that um, throughout the function. Here, 
we have, like I said, the, the life cycles. In this case, I'm, I'm only using here did mount and calling then self reduce after it, it's, it's mounted to update the state passes a, a, a function that passes a, um, returns a, a variant of, of the type of action and then the state gets updated. Here we have no update. Uh, this this is um, some people have trouble with this with 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 reason react. This means that this function is creating uh, the update on itself, and this is a side effect from from this function. So this did mount <coughs> expects to to return uh, an update. Then to comply with the type we do no update because we've already updated here and this needs to return something that is updated and this is just converting string string of int into state count imperative and functional style so here uh, you have fizzbuzz I'm sure you remember a lot of ifs and else is there there's none here so we're here switching on a, on a tuple. We can create the tuple here and then switch on it. You can see that we're getting a number and we're mo moduling by three and by five. And wh what, what happens is that then we can have different results according to, the, um, to what we get from the tuple. So if, it's, uh, if it can be divided by three and five, fizz buzz, if it can be divided by three, fizz, whatsoever uh, and so on and the um, underscore means all the other po possible cases in which you'll return the string of int um, from the <coughs> from the passed in number and then here you have uh, an imperative style loop with the for and then calling the fizzbuzz on the console log buckle script um, like I said, this interacts with JavaScript, so we need to use the foreign function interface to be able to interface JavaScript because we're working directly with, with OCaml and when we need to, to, to let the compiler know, no, we're talking about JavaScript, we use BuckleScript um, foreign function interface. Here we, we're defining a type, it's a generic type. BS new means that we're creating something that requires a constructor. External is every time we need to type something from JavaScript. Create date is the, the name we assign to, to use it. This is the type we need to type every time we, we require external stuff. And date is the, the object we're, we are using. In this case, it will compile to var date equals new date. So notice the constructor and then the, the date in the end. So modules we can we we can import from GS mod the JavaScript modules and um, again external this is the name typing name we can import some module as a different name external the name of the function there here means notice that the difference it means that the function is called add to in this in that module so it will. Uh, bring that that name we don't need to to repeat it so here we we're, we're calling the function and uh, down here we can see the u var u equals require y where i was talking before about requiring with a different name um, again bsvel means that we're calling straight from from the vel we're passing it so again, typings, all that. We're gonna call mat.emule here. I, I mule, I'm sorry. Um, here we, we, document is a very complicated thing to type. So we're passing type DOM as an abstract type. And then we said we are requiring DOM of type DOM and document. This comes from window.document. Again, type param. We can scope stuff. Here we are scoping commands out of the module VS code and using splice to apply any number of um, um, arguments to it. So 
we're calling we're getting that from execute commands and here just want to say that here VS code require VS code and then it maps to VS code dot commands dot execute commands and it passes all the, the arguments there just interrupt I'm almost done on the on the on the examples here and just interrupt it means that we want to use raw JavaScript code inside reason so here we 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 type it we give the BS um, raw and we write the, the function in JavaScript this is very good for um, migrating code bases and we can do partially uh, and the, the good thing is when we when we do this we start getting the the benefits of the type system and reason will compute everything do the types match okay great you can go and then you can add another part and another part and rather than doing a lot of files 80 percent you can do a lot of files 100 percent and incrementally working from there uh, recursion again this what the what I was call I was saying I don't want to take much longer here it's whenever we want to have a function call itself because functions cannot see their bindings if we want to have them call it themselves just use break all right some resources reason docs are amazing very thorough very easy to read uh, this is the way to start just read them all and then move to buckle script manual so this is heavy this heavy is boring but this is where the magic happens um, there's all the interrupt here everything that you need to know to to interface JavaScript is here and then you need buckle script JS API so buckle script can work with 100% of the OCaml API and then to work with the JS API you need to, to use it here uh, there's the link you can um, have a look uh, there's most of ECMAScript 5 and 6 is there there's playgrounds this is on uh, Reason homepage you can try Reason here this is very good because it's got at the same time you've got Reason JavaScript OCaml and um, the output and you can see how it compiles to, uh, to JavaScript and how it would have written have been written in, in um, OCaml last but not least most of us I would say are not used to program JavaScript in a functional way this is a very good uh, writing on the subject this is functional style for JavaScript even even if you're not planning on using reason read it it will make your JavaScript better I can promise you that All right so for quick starters we have basic reason app it's very easy to install uh, reason syntax has been updated recently so we need to just change something in the config should be fast reason react app this is a f uh, an app that will give you a template st uh, structure with uh, reason react installed but the best one for me is reason scripts um, where it's got a, a create react app it's, it comes out of create react app and it's got create react app structure and gives you hot module reloading and um, a lot of good options so this would be my go-to if I was starting um, I got more more resources I just want to talk about this one Reason tools. This is a Chrome extension, Chrome and Firefox extension. This is a lifesaver. It um, it opens when you click, and you can automatically translate from Reason to Reason to OCaml, vice versa. Reason syntax one to syntax two, and it's got this nice switch where it's, um, it's context menu where you can do toggle and if you're reading a, a documentation on OCaml it will toggle and give you everything in Reason so you can read the page as if you're reading a Reason documentation it's quite good and works well with uh, the 
with buckle scripts uh, pages. Last but not least, the community. Uh, Discord, they're super friendly. It's, they're always available. They're, it's super fast. There's so much happening. Reddit, it's cool. There's a lot there. Uh, Twitter, they do a lot of repeats on work there. And there's an ever-growing stack of questions and answers in Stack Overflow. There's more here about talks. And uh, there's another project. There's a reason React Playground. I think I'm a bit over time, and I don't want to um, to go over. There's there's this repo. If you Google uh, awesome reason, you'll get this repo. And thank you. <laughs> I guess we have some time for some questions. Yeah. Does anyone have questions, or was it that bad? And no? No love for functional programming? In new series development, what is the advantage of using this process than other process? Well, um, the advantage here is that you're always, um, you can always rely on your, on your compiler. Uh, OCaml has one of the best compilers in all language uh, in all languages and um, static um, I mean it's one of the best type systems in all of languages and as long as the app compiles you're hundred percent sure that there's no errors regarding the types and how they relate between themselves so test wise you don't need to validate against um, type related uh, issues and um, comp compile there there are no compile time exceptions uh, or there your your this this for me is, is the, the the great thing is that after we we have uh, a type system everything is much sturdier and the syntax is getting so close to to JavaScript that tomorrow we can just write reason and if we need to optimize which I doubt because the, the optimization is very good we have uh, a, an intermediate step where we get very readable JavaScript and then that can be um, minified and all that so there's we always know where we're at with this I'm not sure that answers to your question thank you Um, is it easy to, to debug the app? Well, yes. Um, for, for, for a few reasons. Reasons. Um, so here, for instance, when, when we, we are working in our computer, we, we have all these steps. So we, we can see the generated JavaScript code, we can look at it and maybe, okay, I'm, do, I'm writing something that I believe it's this, but it's not that. And we can, we, when we look to the code, we see, oh, it's getting compiled to something completely different. So that's why there's where, where my error is at. Uh, there's a lot of good error messages on when writing reason. Um, and we can always uh, console log out of that. So if we write in pure uh, traditional functional style, it's a bit more complicated. But then again, there are ways to, to do debugging for functional style uh, with helper functions and things like that. So I would say it's no different than any other functional programming language. But with the added uh, with the added benefit that you can compare the code in Reason in OCaml and in buckles in JavaScript, so that's an extra step to to help you there. And is, is there a way to put breakpoints in there? Yeah, yeah. The, you, you can have the debugger and okay, all yeah, that there. Right. And because uh, Reason is made to interact with the browser, so you can always use Chrome uh, Dev Tools, and you can debug the the, the HTML. Everything. Okay.
Yes. When you say compiler, you mean translator. Because in my opinion, compiler is changing something to machine. Uh, yes. Um, here right. you, you, you have one side with reason and one side with JavaScript. That's right. Yeah, but reason compiles down to JavaScript. So it gets translated to, to, to reason code. It, to, to, it gets translated to OCaml code. It gets parsed, the types, all the types are evaluated, and then Buckle Script compiles it down using the, the, compile, the OCaml compiler to compile it to, to JavaScript. But yeah, I might miss uh, some of the, the names there. And before, w when I said compiler, I meant type system mm -hmm. because the, it's got a really good type system. And how many people are fluent in uh, Reason? Well, more than you'd expect, I would say. Um, if you if you look at the the Discord channel, every day uh, there's a new library, there's a new um, framework. People are creating bindings because, w w as I said, we need to interface JavaScript through um, through Buckle Script. So they create Buckle Script bindings for JavaScript libraries. So there's a lot of work being done by a lot of people, and um, then we have the whole OCaml ecosystem. So whoever can do OCaml can do uh, Reason, because even if they write in OCaml and then just translate, it will work. The only difference is interfacing with JavaScript, but um, the, the foreign interface comes from a uh, foreign function interface comes from OCaml, not from from Buckle Script. So it's not nothing new to to OCaml. So a seasoned the OCaml developer that knows JavaScript knows Reason. Can you compare Reason and TypeScript? Yes. Because they they have also both have the possibilities to make JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> the thing here is. Um, TypeScript is a best um, a best effort system, which means that the compiler will try to make sure all the types match. But for instance, to to TypeScript, you can say, "Oh, I have this variable of type any." And for me, when I worked with TypeScript, that was uh, one of things that I hated the most was when the compiler could not infer the types properly, you have to cheat on the compiler. So you have to trick him, you have to make him believe that you're passing one thing and you're not. So it's really bad. While as Reason has a sound type system because it comes out of OCaml. And like I said, as long as it compiles, we know 100% sure that the types are not lying about themselves and they will confirm so there's no type of any in reason OCaml. Uh, Pedro, you had a question? So, um, for, I, I get it, but for OCaml developers, it will be a really good help to write good JavaScript, right? And to have their apps in built yes. in the right way. But for JavaScript developers, would you say that it would be easier to go through Flow or to TypeScript or whatever, or to reason? because? You're writing in different languages, right? Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, doing TypeScript helped me, but I think it helped me more open my eyes. To be honest, this is what you need to make the transition. I read this in in a weekend. Uh, it's a lot to take in. It's got exercises and all. I, I only managed to on that weekend. I only managed to read to read it from one end to the other. But it's like mind blowing for, for JavaScript. If you've never done functional programming or you never thought about functional um, paradigms, this is going to, to change a lot in the way you, you see JavaScript. So, what I recommend is we don't need to go through TypeScript, but the, the ideal is we read this, we understand where it's coming from, we do the exercises, and then we, we start with reason. 
and the syntax was it easy to, to adapt, right? Yeah. Well, the first syntax was a bit ugly, and uh, some constructions of, of, of the code would get uh, very, um, it would be fuzzy, it, it, it wouldn't be easy to identify which part was a parameter or or was a type because of the way it was written before the new the new um, syntax is much cleaner reason versus version 3 it's much cleaner it's so close to javascript it's incredible it's it's really cool and they're they're working on it every day so it's just i've i've been following this for a while now and every time i open discord it's like it's something new it's like oh we're in version so much more <laughs> so it's getting really better by the day I, even if you don't ever look at this again, I would recommend this this book. Um, you, you can read it online, by the way. It's free, uh, and this for me is is the the best way for someone that knows JavaScript well to jump into functional programming. We don't need to write. We will have the slides. Uh, yes, um, I'll share the slides. I have a longer version with more annotations, so. I'll share that one as well. <coughs>